the aforementioned Amon Ross St. Brown is our consensus wide receiver 10. Uh, for me, he is probably going to be like the one of the tightest range outcomes I think that there is for these wide receivers in this range. Like I think he is a low-end wide receiver one, like guaranteed. Um, the only real concern is how much red zone work he can get and if he builds any more of his game to get anything more downfield than he's already getting. Because those are, those are the only things, only kind of knocks you can actually have on Amon Ra. He's a beast, an absolute beast in the slot in the middle of the field. He can work outside. He gets some rushing yards, some carries. He's very, very good player. It's just how much will he get in the red zone? And will he get any more explosive plays building on what he's already doing? And not to mention Jamison Williams being suspended for the first six games can only really help Amon Ra St. Brown in the beginning of the season. Jake, how are we feeling? Yeah, kind of everything you said. I think we're with him. The only thing we're really betting on is some some touchdown regression to kind of match the the target rate that he got there last year. Um, you know, he was uh, eighth in all of football in red zone targets and just only just didn't convert a ton of them into touchdowns. Whether that was quarterback play, play design, whatever it may be, it's really the only route that I see to him really making a jump uh, past where I have him ranked, um, which is why I have him so low. I just need those touchdowns to convert at a little bit of a higher rate. But again, like you said, probably the tightest range of outcomes here. I don't expect him to be a top three wide receiver by any means, but I also don't expect him to fall out of like the top 15. Like it's just, he's going to get pelted with targets, especially early in the year, because, you know, as much as we love a deep threat, they're not going to throw to Khalif Raymond and they're not going to throw to whoever is starting as, you know, they're starting X uh, to begin the year. So I'm just not worried about him. I just can't make a super strong argument to move him up any higher um, just because he is a little bit limited in, in what we can expect out of him. Tim, what do we think? I think he is the threshold when it comes to how I like to describe changing your draft expectations from like highest level outcomes upsides to most uh, likely outcomes when it comes to this this position where yeah you're gonna you're gonna switch it up as you like move through tiers or move up and down depending on where you're at in your wide receiver room that you've drafted already but to me um the, he has he has good upside compared to even like the rest of the group just below him but like you guys said he's kind of stuck where he's at where it's most likely that he's gonna hit exactly between that 10 to 15 range absolutely like no questions asked but there is I don't want to say limitation because we've seen him put up 40. So I don't want to say that at all. But like, I do think that with how the offense performed last year, we could have seen maybe one of the best seasons he's ever going to have. And Detroit was super efficient last year. I think they were third in touchdowns. All the, all of the positives we can say about this group last year, there are uh, opportunities for this, this team not to perform to as high of levels as they did last year. So to me, this is where he should be going. And I can't really argue for him to go any higher. But if you look at all the players below him, and I love Jalen Waddle, love Jalen Waddle. It's very hard to make any sort of argument for a player to be above Amon Ra. 